Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Didums Does Gaming. This episode today is not going to be about adventures or anything like that. I'm in fact playing on a private server. I am the only person online at the moment. I got sent a couple of requests from a couple of subscribers that basically said to me, Didums, what do you do when you first spawn in? What is your sort of tactic what is your procedure to sort of get the ball rolling and get things going so i've got this brand new spawn i think i'm uh, to be honest i don't know where i am i'm quite close to cherno i think there's a nice thunderstorm going on over there and i am now going to show you guys on an empty server how i start off with this game now as i said i'm on a private server which means that the spawning in rules are different to what you would find on a public server that's why i'm holding a pistol a makarov which is a horrible weapon i should just point out and we are going to see if we can survive a little while maybe someone can learn something from this little episode if you guys can this isn't going to be part of my series this is purely a standalone video that i intend to do so let's see how this goes. Just picked up a can of beans. My mouse is being a bit dodgy there, so excuse me for a second. And I now need to try and find a hatchet. That's going to be the first thing I want to find. Now the reason I want a hatchet is because it consumes no ammo. It is silent and it's a one hit kill to zombies. Now hatchets can be found in industrial spawns. Which are generally these smaller buildings and also huge warehouses but um yeah the um the alternative to a hatchet this this little building here this little hut actually counts as a industrial spawn believe it or not that little roof over there um the alternative to a hatchet is a crowbar also silent infinite ammo but it takes I think between three and five shots to take out some bad guys so I'm not gonna be looking for one of those if I see one I'll take it just to tie me over for now ultimately my mission right now is to find a hatchet now I'm gonna be throwing out a few tips in case anyone is new to the game you'll see that this guy cannot he cannot run indoors so we'll just put a bullet in his head take him out Ideally, you want to take zombies out when you're indoors. They can't run. They can't pursue you very fast. I love the weather effects of this game. Um, so, yeah. If you've got some bad guys running after you, just find a building you can get into. Provided you've got a weapon and take them out from there. It just means you have a much better chance of survival. I'm hoping we find a hatchet fairly soon. Pretty sure. Hmm, I thought that door could open, but obviously not. That building right ahead, that tiny little building there, is also an industrial spawn. So let's see if we can find no nothing worthwhile in there. Obviously, that's a building with one door in and out. So if I get in there and zombies come after me, I'm gonna get stuck. I'm gonna get, get trapped, and it's gonna turn nasty. And I only got five shots left in the Makarov, so I want to conserve my ammo as much as I can. And also, avoid firing as much as I can, because these zombies, they love heading towards sound. As soon as they hear noise, they go straight after it. So, avoid firing with um, weapons unless you have to. This one we can get into. There we go, there's the hatchet. Awesome, so we'll grab that. And get out of here quick before this guy makes me bleed. Get into another building. And what we're going to do is right click on the hatchet on the tool belt. Do remove from tool belt. And then weapon hatchet, which you obviously select with the scroll wheel. Now, I've assumed when starting this video that you guys know a little bit of the basics of just playing computer games. So you know that WASD is move. Um, 
it's pretty much the same walking controls as any other shooter that you would play and obviously look around is with the mouse mouse click is attack your right mouse button is zoom in like so so it's it, i mean the controls in this game aren't the best of any shooter i've ever played crap i'm bleeding now with the hatchet another tip i'll give you guys is that you need to aim a bit to the left so if you aim slightly to the left you have the highest chances of hitting your targets if you aim straight on you're not going to be able to hit them now playing in third person which you activate by pressing activate came out a bit weird you activate by pressing the enter key on your numpad that's the default control anyway so let's get this door open I'm very wary of gates and doors because they have a fairly strong tendency to want to break legs. If you come too close to a door and you open it and you don't time it right or whatever, it will break your leg, which is can be a bit annoying. Another hatchet there, but we've got one now. So let's see. Let's have a look, see if there's any vehicles lying around. There's no players on the server, obviously, so I'm not too concerned about dying at the moment. Got some bandages, got some basic supplies. Now that there is a vehicle carcass. You can't use those. If they look like they're rusted and corroded, like that one there as well, you cannot repair those vehicles, so don't waste your time trying. You will notice if a vehicle can be used because it will look repairable. So yeah, we've got some engine parts there. I'm not going to take that now. I'm not too worried about getting spares now. I just want to see if there's something worth using first. But I uh, know where these parts are. We just came across a wheel a few minutes ago as well, so I know where that is. Let's see if we can find anything useful in here. Looks like a... Now you see that little bag there? That can be loads of different things. That can be a watch. It can be... It's a watch. There we go. It can also be a map. Um, it can be a few other things as well. But I'm not actually sure. I know... No, don't do that. Um... I think you can actually have ammo in them as well. I'm not 100% sure. Grab a can of Pepsi. Always good. Cool. So we've got... If we press G, we've got three cans of food. We've got a can of pasta, frank and beans, and some regular beans. And we've got a Pepsi. We've also got a water bottle. Now, I spawned in with some food and some basic supplies. Now, obviously, this being a private server is why. So, if you spawn in on a public server, you will not have these things. Uh, what else do I need to tell you guys? On public servers, your character is persistent. But only your character and his inventory. So, how do I explain this? Okay, so you've got your character with his stuff on him. And you join a public server. You join a server, you grab some gear, and you log off. You can then join a different public server, and your character will still spawn in the same place with the same gear. But if you join a private server, you lose everything. So everything I gain on this server right now, which is a private server, will not carry over to any other server. Now you have tents, which you can use to store things. These can be stashed away in secret locations. They tend to be a bit difficult to find but they come in very handy should you find one because you can go into the mountains find a nice quiet place and put a tent down there and you can actually store quite a bit in them the problem with tents is that they do not carry over from one server to another whether it be private servers public servers it just doesn't carry over at all so the where you put your tent is where it stays uh, vehicles, the same for vehicles as well. Vehicles can be very useful for storing things. If you find a vehicle somewhere and you want to stash some stuff in it, the UAZ in particular for this is, is in particular very good for this. Oh, I used to know how to talk well English. 
Um, vehicles obviously have different cargo capacities, I suppose you could call it. The helicopter is probably having the worst. UAZ being one of the best. Now you get different UAZs. You get a car model. And you get one that's sort of a pickup with a canopy on the back. And as far as I'm aware, from personal experience at least, the UAZ with the per with the ca See, I'm doing it again. The UAZ with the canopy on the back is the one with the highest load capacity. They might maybe we'll get lucky. They not very common. I mean, vehicles are quite rare. This server has actually got 200 vehicles in it at any given point. Now, these, as I said, these carcasses do not count as vehicles. So, don't try and repair those guys because it's not going to get you anywhere. Now, as you can see, with zombies, I'm just running everywhere I go. Um, the zombies are quite stupid. If you break sight with them for a few seconds, they stop following you. This, when I first started playing the game, zombies were the biggest thing to overcome. They were a real pain in the ass because they seemed to follow me everywhere and round corners and whatnot. Everywhere I went, the zombies just followed me. But just like now, I'm going to break sight with these guys, run around a corner, run around another corner, go inside this building, and hopefully they'll stop following me. Now, in case you guys aren't aware, zombies are very, very noise sensitive their eyesight isn't very good but if they hear you they know where you are and obviously you've got your ear icon in the top right there as you can see right next to the eye or right above the eye that is the sound and your visibility that you're making so at the moment i'm on one bar sound and three bars visibility the sound is the one you should be more concerned with as a player because that's what zombies detect the most. And there's obviously not much here, so we're going to walk down a little bit further. Another carcass up there. Now, obviously, I'm running around just doing my thing on this server, but if you guys join other servers and there are players online, don't go running around like me unless it's a very quiet server and you want to take your chances because particularly in populated areas, cities, Cherno, Electro, that kind of thing, that's that's fuel tank parts by the way, you will have snipers that po post, that park up on the hills right up there and you won't be able to see them. They're very well hidden. They will have a ghillie suit on and they'll have their nice big sniper rifle and they will shoot you from sometimes a kilometer away so it's best to play it safe and this is a lesson I've learned the hard way I'm yet to kill a player by myself actually um, but then again I'm not too concerned with killing players at the moment I'm just enjoying the survival aspects of the game and just not getting killed by zombies and trying to find vehicles and you know just get things going but usually by the time I get things going, as soon as I get a vehicle or something, I die and, you know, it just ends up in a messy disaster. So what have we got here? Double-barreled shotgun. Now, that is actually a decent weapon. I wouldn't say it's good. My experience of it is that it's rubbish because you've got two shots. It makes a huge bang when you shoot. And by the time you've killed the first zombie with one shot, you've got about another 15 on you and you've got one shot left to kill them all. So, personally, I don't bother with that. But I suppose if you're not too phased about running away from zombies, then it should be fine. Let's see. And this is a petrol station up ahead, or a gas station, as they say in the America lands. It would be nice if I actually had a vehicle or a jerry can to show you guys what goes on now. Actually, I can't see them. Come on. Alright, well that guy doesn't want to play a game, so we'll just go through here. Nothing useful in there. Now these tanks, you get them all over the place. There's those two there, there's this one here. Um, oh, is that? What is that? Ah, oh, it's only baked beans. 
If you find a 7-up in the game, it is one of the rarest items in the game, actually. It's purely aesthetic. It doesn't give you anything or give you any extra stats or speed bonuses or anything. There's none of that in this game. It's just purely cosmetic. But it is quite cool to find one sometimes. I found a couple. I always end up in a difficult situation and having to consume them, but such is life, I suppose. But, um, yeah, back to the tanks. There are those tanks which do not have a ladder on the side, as you guys saw. But there are also other ones which do have a ladder on the side. And the ones with the ladder, you actually have to go up with an empty jerry can. You climb up the one side onto the top of the tank and you can fill up a jerry can. Now, a jerry can holds 20 liters of fuel. And different vehicle classes have different size fuel tanks. For example, cars, I think all of them have... 100 litre fuel tanks, I might be wrong. Uh, helicopters, I'm not too sure on. I think they've got, I don't know, 300 or something. And planes, I think they have 200 or something like that. I don't know, don't quote me on those figures. I'm probably very, very far off. But just for the sake of giving you guys an idea that a jerry, one jerry can won't just fill up a vehicle, that, that'll do, I think. Now, this building, if you look at this, you see how it's got one window on the right and two windows on the left. That means that from the other side of this building, you can go in there. Now, the biggest lesson for me when learning to play this game was figuring out which buildings you can get into and which ones you can't. Because if you've got a building out in the distance, and it'll take you 30 seconds to get there, it's pointless running the 30 seconds if you already know beforehand that you can't enter the building. But this, these buildings are a bit of a modular system. You'll find them with all different configurations of windows and whatnot. But from a distance, you're going to be looking for chimney in the middle, window on the right, and two windows on the left with a gap in between. If you see that from a distance, that means you can get into those buildings. So, I'm going to go around there. See? There you go. You can go in there. You can see through the windows, which means automatically that you can get into the building. Nothing of any use in there. Right. Inside this building, I generally tend to stay on this side of the dining room table. Because it... Oh, don't know why it didn't hit there. But it gives you a good vantage point to take out any zombies that are attacking you. This, I can tell you right off the top of my head, you can't get into. Same for the building ahead of me there. Can't get into that. Now that looks... I don't even know what that is. It's probably a mountain. Again this you can't get into this so it's mainly the brown buildings you want to be looking out for that is called residential loot i think they call it or something i don't know but that's where you find food drink uh you'll find the odd hunting knife matches maybe a torch a small bag that kind of thing you find in there and obviously you've got military spawns that's where you find stuff like weapons ammo ghillie suits night vision goggles that kind of thing but by far the most interesting thing to find is a heli spawn. A heli crash site. Now these are server spawned. And it's basically a crashed helicopter with a huge plume of smoke coming out the top. Now the zombies around these things are, I think, a bit tougher. I'm not too sure. I might be wrong. But if you see one, you'll see this plume of smoke from quite far away if you've got your view distance set quite high. And... As soon as you zoom in from quite far away, you will see that there are zombies that appear right next to the helicopter, and they will start moving outwards. Now, if you approach one of these, and you can see it from quite far away, and there are zombies already quite far away, that means there's another player there. So, another player has approached that helicopter, he's activated the zombie spawn, and the zombies have started moving out. So, you need to watch out for that. Obviously, if you approach it and there are no zombies come closer and the zombies suddenly start spawning then you know you're the only person that's close by but be warned helicopters helicopter crash sites are very lucrative they generally have the best military loot in the game that's where you're going to find your sniper rifles your light machine guns that kind of thing ammo night vision goggles basically the most difficult stuff to get hold of in the game that's what you're going to find at helicopter crash sites. Now, the reasoning these things even exist is when the outbreak happened, 
these helicopters loaded up with passengers and whatnot and they tried to get the hell out of dodge before the shit hit the fan but obviously they were too late everyone turned into zombies the helicopter crashed and all their gear is still on the helicopter and the zombies that were then taken over or bitten by the virus are now zombies and they want to kill you but obviously they a bit tougher than regular zombies i think i think i might be wrong i generally tend to kill zombies with my hatchets only uh, i'll take out the odd zombie with a gun if i have to but i avoid it if i can because obviously it makes a noise and noises in this game attract attention big time zombies players the lot they love to listen for noise so hatchets is the way to go for me so i don't know the zombies might be tougher they might not it could just be that because i'm using a hatchet and that kills everything with one shot i don't know i don't know but anyway let's have a little walk through these woods i'm gonna see if i can find a helicarrier site so stay with me guys